Okay, so in light of the last video that I just uploaded, I want to um, point something out to everyone and put this stuff in perspective. Now, this is why we're watching. This is why we're paying attention. The Bible gives us clues, lots of clues. In this particular video, I'm going to cover three instances, three shadows of the rapture of the church. The events that happened in the past that are described in the Bible that mimic and mirror what's coming. And I want to point something very clear out to here. Because I've been saying this since way back at the beginning of 2019. That I always had the feeling that we were going to have, we were going to know when it was going to happen. Didn't know how, didn't know, you know, what was going to unfold, but I had a feeling it was going to happen. We're going to start in Genesis 7-1 with Noah and the ark. So we go back to Genesis 6, starting in verse 9 is Noah and the flood. And you see a big description here of God telling him, everything he's going to do. The very last verse in Genesis 6, it's verse 22. Thus Noah did according to all that God commanded him, so he did. He was commanded to build a boat. He was commanded to preach. He was commanded to get ready and gather all the animals and everything. Noah did it. Okay, God, I got you. I'm on it. Verse 7, or chapter 7, then the Lord said to Noah, Come into the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. Basically, basically, um, Noah fulfilled his ministry. Now, we all have ministries. Noah fulfilled his ministry. He did what he was commanded to do. Simple. He believed. Simple. He trusted God. Simple. He tells him, Take all the animals. Then he says... Uh, keep them alive. In verse 4, Genesis 7, 4, he says, For after seven more days I will cause it to rain on the earth forty days and forty nights, and I will destroy the face of the earth and all the living things I have made. Noah and his family who were on the ark with all them animals, because God sealed the door. It was on the ark. Knew when this was going to happen. He told them, seven more days, that's it. Everything's getting taken out and y'all are going up. Done deal. He knew. He was known. He was told what was going to happen. And you go read the rest of Genesis 7, you see all the detail that was in They knew what was going to happen. They knew when it was going to happen. There was no doubt in their mind. When Lot was told to leave uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. So it's Genesis 19. God rescues Lot. Now the two angels, verse 1 in Genesis 19, Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. Verse 2, And he said, Here now, my lords, please turn into your servant's house and spend the night, and wash your feet. Then you may rise early and go on your way. And they said, No, but we will spend the night in the open square. Now you guys remember some of the stuff I shared with you before? They found written decrees uh, scrolls where they, the the mayor or whatever, the ruler of that particular area, uh, commanded them to put beds out in the square so they could rape people that came in from other other towns. That's how depraved they were. But he insisted strongly, so they turned into him and entered his house. Then he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. Those people don't realize Lot did them a huge favor. It just prolonged the inevitable anyway. Verse 4, Now before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both old and young, all the people from every quarter surrounded the house. All the people. What do we have going on in our world right now? L listen to the shadows of what's going on here. And they called to Lot and said to him, Where are the men who came to you uh, tonight? Bring them out to us that we may know them carnally. They wanted to have sex with these angels. That was the decree that was put out. Strangers come to the town. You get introduced to the to the area. That was their thing. That's what they knew of these places. There's a whole lot of this mess going on. Pretty grotesque. So Lot went out to them through the doorway, shut the door behind him, and said, Please, my brethren, do not do so wickedly. See now, I have two daughters who have not known a man. Please let me bring them out to you, and you may do to them as you wish. Only do nothing to these men, since uh, this is the reason they have come under the shadow of my roof. And they said, Stand back, verse 9. Then they said, This one came in to you, stay here, and he keeps acting as a judge. Now we will deal worse with you than with them. So they pressed hard against the man Lot 
and came near to break down the door. Does this sound familiar to anybody? Lot's trying to stand up for what's right, and what are they doing? Attacking him. He called him brethren. He's attacking him. A whole lot of people doing videos ought to, ought to make ought to make you stop and think for a minute. But the men reached out their hands and pulled Lot into the house with them and shut the door. Verse 11, And they struck the men who were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they became weary trying to find the door. Then the men said to Lot, Have you anyone else here? Son-in-law, sons, daughters, whoever you have in the city, take them out of this place. Notice the exclamation point. They're like, you need to leave now. Verse 13, For we will destroy this place because the outcry came against the outcry against them has grown great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and spoke to his, son in, his sons-in-law, who had married his daughters, and said, Get up, get out of this place, for the Lord will destroy the city. But to his sons-in-laws, he seemed to be joking. Now Lot's warning them, Hey, y'all need to pay attention. And he's warning relatives. These were his sons-in-laws that had married his daughters. And they're blowing him off. Does this sound familiar to anybody? Lots, lots going through his version of what we're going through right now. Us on here trying to sound the alarm and warn people to be ready. Verse 15. When the morning dawned, the angels urged Lot to hurry, saying, Arise, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of this city. I told him, you got to go, man. Or you're going to get caught up in this. Verse 16, And while he lingered, the men took hold of his hand, his wife's hand, and the hands of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful to him. And they brought him out and set him outside the city. He was snatched up. Come here, Lot. You're not using your right thinking. We're going to take care of you. Verse 17, So it came to pass, when they had brought him outside, that he said, Escape for your life! Exclamation point. Like, run, Forrest. Do not look behind you, nor stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountains, lest you be destroyed. Verse 18. Then Lot said to them, Please know, my lords. He had compassion on the people. Verse 19. Indeed, now your servant has found favor in your sight, and you have increased your mercy, which you have shown me by saving my life. But I cannot escape to the mountains, lest some evil overtake me, and I die. See now, this city is near enough to flee to, and it is a little one. Please let me escape there. Uh, is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. And he said to him, See, I have favored you concerning this thing also, in that I will not overthrow this city for which you have spoken. Hurry, escape there, for I cannot do anything until you arrive there. Therefore the name of the city was called Zoar. They've since found the city of Zoar. He says, hurry, escape there, for I cannot do anything until you arrive there. It wasn't until Lot and his daughters and his wife were safe. Of course, the wife did, was an idiot. It wasn't until they were safe that they destroyed everything. He was caught up to Zoar, another city. The name Zoar means little or small. Little group, small group, don't know, just spitballing. Small group of people that are going to get taken, because it looks a lot smaller. So you go on, you read the rest of this, and you see what happened. So he knew. There was no doubt in Lot's mind. Angels were out there like, come on, man, let's go. We ain't got time for you to grab your stuff. You need to leave. This place is about to be wiped out. So he knew. He was very aware. They had actually given him time to consider it and think about it. Now, let's go to the third really good um, shadow of, of the rapture. This one here is the strongest shadow there is, 2 Kings 2.1. Elijah taken to heaven. He was taken. He was caught up. Verse 1, 2 Kings 2, 1, And it came to pass when the Lord was about to take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Then Elijah said to Elisha, 
Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Not only did Elijah know, but Elisha knew he was about to get caught up. And even the people in Bethel knew he was about to get caught up. What is... This isn't rocket science. I can read English. This indicates a whole bunch of people were aware Elijah was about to leave. Again, another small group. In this case, one. All three cases, we see the same scenario. They're very aware this was about to happen. Then Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho came to Elijah and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? So he answered, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Now Jericho is included in this. Why would the Lord put these inconsequential details in here like this? Because these, these aren't germane to the story. He's telling us something. It's a secret that's hidden in here. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood facing them at a distance, while the two of them stood by the Jordan. Now they knew. So it wasn't like this was a secret. In Lot's case, it wasn't a secret. In Noah's case, it wasn't a secret. Verse 8, Now Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water, and it was divided this way and that, so that the two of them crossed over dry ground. That sound familiar to anybody? God puts this stuff in here for a reason. Verse 9, And so it was, when they had crossed over, that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask, what may I do for you before I am taken away from you? Elisha said, Please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. Spirit of Elijah? John the Baptist got that. Verse 10, So he said, You have asked a hard thing, nevertheless. If you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. Then it happened, as they continued on and talked, that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire. Suddenly, in an instant, blink of an eye, chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried out, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. So he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes and tore them to pieces. He knew he was going, and it still he still went into mourning. He rent his clothes. And man shall return to his eternal home, and the mourners will enter the streets. Ecclesiastes 12. 12, 6, I think. So then he took up the mantle of Elijah, Banked to the Jordan, went on and did his thing. He knew. He knew when. He didn't quite know where, but he knew when. And all of a sudden, boop, there it was. He was aware of what was going to happen to him. And it wasn't just Elijah. Elisha, too. It wasn't just them, too. It was a whole group of people from several places. Bethel, Jericho, and Jordan. This wasn't a secret. I'm curious what the, uh, let's see, he was taken up. I'm curious what the Greek is for that. Went up, he went up. It's verse 11. Let's go look in the Greek. Allah. Primitive root to ascend, and translated be high, or active mount, used in a great variety of senses, primary and secondary, literally and figuratively, arise, up, cause to, ascend up, at once, break the day up, bring up, cause to burn, carry up, cast up, um, shoe, climb up, cause to, make to, come up, cut off, dawn, depart, exalt, excel, fall, fetch up, Get up, make two, go, away up, grow, over, increase, lay, leap, levy, lift, self, up, 
light make up, X mention, mount up, offer make to pay plus perfect, prefer, put on, raise, recover, restore, make to, rise up, scale, set up, shoot forth up, begin to spring up, stir up, take away up, and work. Kind of sounds like a harpazo, don't it? Just saying. Now, what did he what did he say up here? Because he had talked to him up here. Let's see. He would take him up. All law, same word, same definition. A snatching away. See, a lot of times we see in the Old Testament a different Greek word is used than what in the New Testament. Yet the definitions are very similar. This indicates a forceful removal. You read all those definitions. It, it indicates a forceful removal. A forceful departure. You go look at Harpazzo, same thing. In fact, let's go look at Harpazzo before we end here. Caught up. Harpazzo, derivative of G138 to seize in various applications. Catch away, up, pluck, pull, take by force. Several of those words are used in all laws definition. So we're talking about the same thing here, aren't we? In all three of those instances, those guys knew what was about to happen to them. They were very aware, and it got right up to the point when it was about to happen. Even better, something that we're seeing right now, Exodus 12. These guys, I believe they went up out of Egypt. So, do not eat it. Tenth plague, and here's the Exodus. Let's see. Brought, the land, brought them out of the land of Egypt according to their army. So, bring them out. Exodus 1242. Let's see what this says. Bring them out. Yatsal, primitive root, to go, causatively, bring out. In a great variety of applications, sounds kind of familiar already, literally or figuratively, direct or proximate, after, appear, assuredly, bear out, begotten, break out, bring forth, out, up, carry out, come, abroad, out, there, at, with, you get the point, I don't need to read the whole thing, it's all the same definition. So here, again, we see another version of a harpazo. It's a version, it's a shadow of the actual event. We see all these shadows, but here again, when you read Exodus 12, God told them, here's what you're going to do. Notice here's the seven days again, just like in uh, Noah in the flood. He told them what to do, and he told them exactly when they were going to leave. He said, on the 14th, you're going to do this, and on the 15th, you're out of here. They knew. They knew in advance. Ironically, this really closely matches what we're seeing right now. Ironically, they knew two weeks in advance. When did all everybody start getting these revelations? About two weeks ago. So, the reason why I'm doing this video is I'm proving a point. First of all, we we see the three greatest uh, mentions or shadows of the Harpazo event, the catching away in the Old Testament, and there's more: Book of Ruth, um, uh, Isaiah, Zechariah, a couple other ones. When we see this, and we read these shadows, we see that. They knew, they were very aware of what was happening and what was about to happen. And it was a certain time period before that they knew it was about to unfold. How amazing that two, week, two weeks ago, many of us started receiving this revelation. Independently of each other. Not, it was all almost at the same time. Some had it, had, had, had it before, but hadn't mentioned it yet.
But all of a sudden, they're mentioning it because they're like, oh, everybody else is seeing this. And it's the same time frame. In this shadow, we see very clear directions being given before the event's happening. And every one of them, all the people, are very aware. So, people are getting mad and they're saying, oh, you guys set a date, when none of us said anything about a date. You're setting a date, you're setting a date. When they knew it was about to happen and when it was going to happen. What does that tell you? And we know that if something is a shadow of it, that means much of what happened during that is going to happen at the real event, right? Can we all agree on that? So if in the shadows, they had one to two weeks prior notice to what there was going to happen to them, in all three of these events, and even in the other events, that means that when the real event happens, we're going to have notice of it, aren't we? We're going to be aware that this is going to happen. We will know not specifically, but we will know when it is going to happen. We will see that small, tiny window of time frame. So if somebody makes a video, like myself, for instance, and I tell you, hey, it looks pretty good for this time frame, I'm not, but I'm not telling you a specific day or time, what should that tell you? Especially if it matches the other events and the other accounts that are similar to it in the Bible. So instead of complaining and griping because you don't want to get offended or you'll get your feelings hurt, maybe you ought to start paying attention. Maybe you need to be reading the Bible and studying like the rest of us are and catch up. Because when I read these things, these four events that I talk about, when I read these, I see very clear indicators. Shadows of the main event, of what's going to happen. God has given us this for a reason. You ever read through here and go, why, did, why, did, why is that in the Bible? Because that doesn't mean anything to anything. And then all of a sudden, boop, now it means something. The book of Ruth, perfect example. People just in the last 15 years have started to realize the book of Ruth tells the entire story of the whole Bible, beginning to end. It's all in the book of Ruth. And they always wonder, why is the book of Ruth in there? Now we know why. God doesn't do this stuff by accident. He does it on purpose. So when we know that, and we know the Bible is the authority, and we read this in here, hmm, I might need to pay attention to this. This means something. And in almost every one of these instances, instances, they went out at night. Almost every one of them. It was either twilight or it was even, or early morning, one of the two. What does that tell you? So if you're not willing to go do the work, if you're not willing to go do the studies, you have no business and no right to tell anyone else who is doing it that they're wrong. Because see, I've gone and done the research. Wackadoodle Samoan has done the research. Tim Henderson has done the research. Watchman 65 has done the research. Diamond Dustification has done the research. And many, many others. We're in these scriptures, we're digging them, and we're being led to this stuff. What does that tell you? How funny is it, though, that the same thing that happened to them, those guys who had that warning and were trying to share it with everybody and warn them, the same thing that happened to them is happening to us. How, how amazing is that? Talk about looking in a mirror. So if you want to rant and rave and you want to complain, oh, they're setting it. Go ahead. I hope you don't get left here to have to regret what you're doing. Because what I see is that it's all about to come to an end. And many others just like me are seeing this. There are people that are having this revelation that don't even do YouTube videos. Some that don't even watch YouTube videos. And they're having the same exact revelation. What does that tell you? He's warning us. But if that's all, if that's what you, that's what you want. Okay, that can be your ministry, your ministry of complaining. You can go complain all you want, but the evidence speaks for itself. The word matches it. And then, you know, we did. We haven't even touched on. I didn't even go to. Where's it at? I didn't even go to this. For man goes to his eternal home and the mourners go out in the streets. If you go read Ecclesiastes 12, verses 1 through 6, tell me that is not talking about what we're doing right now and what's happening. And then it says, rapture. 
Is this not no another warning letting us know? Just saying, guys. Just saying. So, again, all those people that are crying about this stuff, all those people that are complaining, okay, you may, you may be able to inflict some of your um, will on other people. But the facts remain. The Bible is telling us that we will know. And how funny is it that it looks like we do know. But if you want to stay here, by all means, I'm not going to hold you back. I'm going to run out ahead of you if I can. So to all them people griping, y'all might want to start reading your Bibles. Because clearly you're not. Clearly you're not taking the time to look at these scriptures. That all of us that are doing videos are spending so much time and energy setting up and putting together for you. But instead you just want to do this. Instead of opening your Bible and going and reading it for yourself. I never tell anybody to believe me. I never tell anybody to take what I say for granted. What do I tell you guys? Go read the Word. But see... That's the kind of mentality you have right now. The same thing that happened to Elijah and Elisha. The same thing that happened to Noah. The same thing that happened to Lot. The same thing that happened to Moses. They were making fun of him too. It's the same thing that's happening to us right now. Good luck. Good luck. I got nothing but love for you, but I'm not going to feel sorry for you because you made this decision, not me. I'm putting out the warning. I'm a watchman. I'm putting out the warning. I hope you come to your senses. Because what comes after, it's not like you think it's going to be. Y'all better figure this out. Or it's not going to end well for you. Just saying. You call yourself a Christian, why don't you believe what the Bible says? I do.